Next, we have Glenn Ford. Glenn is executive director of Black Agenda Report, which I, I try to read at least three to four times a week. And he can be contacted at glennford at blackagendareport.com. He also writes extensively for Common Dreams, an independent nonprofit news center, which provides breaking news and views for the progressive community. Mr. Glenn Ford, thank you. Power to the people. In this venue, power to the people means all power to those who are struggling uh, to defeat the war machine of US imperialism. Uh, it's common nowadays to characterize the militarization of US society as an outgrowth of American aggressions abroad, a kind of blowback in which uh, the home country's society is infected with the militarism of its foreign legions. Uh, but I don't think that that's the proper indictment. Uh, the United States has grown into a global superpower of crime, but it was born a criminal and has in fact been exporting the demons that were built into its DNA from the very beginning as a nation that was born in slavery and genocide. It is well suited to the role of destroyer of peoples and of nations. Uh, it's external, and its internal violence are manifestations of the same pathology. It's a kind of feedback loop as the empire attempts to feed upon the world. It was 164 years ago that Frederick Douglass said, there was not a nation on earth guilty of the practices more shocking and bloody than the American people are at this very hour. He was talking about U.S. internal violence. Today, uh, now that the U.S. has grown into a superpower, Frederick Douglass's words apply to all of those U.S. targeted nations around the planet, which only further encourages the bestiality of the United States at home. It is a dialectical relationship, and we have to fight the madness at both ends of this diabolical, dialectical loop. Under George Bush, uh, the United States attempted to conquer and feed upon Iraq. It was a fur fury of engorgement. Uh, and the ruling class's servants in Washington decided that they were going to destroy Iraq's capacity, its ability to exist in any form except as an extension of the US empire, an empire that just like Southern slavery has to expand in order to continue uh, to exist. The attack on Iraq, with all its fury, only served to further legitimize the armed suppression of despised and colonized people in the United States. If Iraq was such a dangerous place that it requires, in fact, demands the systematic application of terror and shock and awe, well then, so is the South Bronx, and so is Detroit, and so is Ferguson. These places are all sources of insurgency, and they all need constant applications of pacification. Barack Obama took the Iraq war justification to its logical conclusion on the domestic front. Before Obama took office, the Pentagon's program for transferring uh, military weapons and equipment to local police departments never exceeded $34 million a year. But by 2014, under Barack Obama, that figure rose to 787 million. That's a 2,400% increase in just a couple of years. Even after Ferguson erupted, Obama's Pentagon spent 
500 million, that is about half a billion dollars on weapons and equipment for the occupation of mostly black and brown communities. And that is in just one year, coming up from a norm under previous presidents of about 30 million. As others have already said, in monetary terms, the Iraq war has cost trillions of dollars. Uh, back in 1967, Dr. Martin Luther King lamented that, and these are his words, America would never invest the necessary funds or energies in the rehabilitation of its poor so long as adventures like Vietnam continue to draw men and skills and money like some demonic destructive suction tube. King did not conclude that if there had not been a Vietnam War that the United States would have spent all that money uh, on the poor. He said instead that America had gone mad with war, meaning that the rulers had chosen war. They chose war because war is profitable and war is necessary for the empire's existence. War at home and war abroad is the cost the people of the United States pay for tolerating this system and its empire. War is the cost of the system. That means an anti-war movement must be a struggle against the system that produces war. Thank you. <laughs>